How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. I been working on a project oh, for the surface grinder and uh, making a new lead screw and nut. Now I showed that in previous video how worn out. I don't know. Uh, maybe I didn't show how worn out it was. But this is the old lead screw. And you'll uh, I, I zoomed in pretty good I think in the in the part of the video so of how worn out this is. This is like razor sharp in here and this is an Acme thread uh, 10 pitch uh, 10 TPI. But we're going to start off we're going to make a new uh, we'll make a whole new lead screw for it. And we'll make a, this is the nut part of it. This is the block that fits in the uh, Underneath, I should say, to, to stop it from moving on the surface grinder. It's a, it kind of floats on top of a block. But the threads are all worn out in this. And I'm going to show, we'll show, be showing, uh, you know, the repair of this block and then the making of a new piece here. This is a, adjustable so that you can get the backlash out. So we'll start off with the lead screw. And then in the following parts, we'll be fixing the threaded block and then installing. So uh, stay tuned and uh, enjoy the videos. Thank you. Well, we lifted the, I guess you call it carriage off, <laughs> the surface grinder. And pretty nasty. Like I said, I don't know what the stuff they were graining, but it's very goopy and sticky. But water dissolves it, so it's not... Too not too bad. Well, it's a little oily, messy here. We'll clean that up. All the rolls are all the rollers are in here. The little plastic springs. Each one has a little oil bath. Uh, these are the one-shot lubricator lines. So I will be. I'll be. Uh, everything's got oil in, so they're probably clear. But I'm gonna check. I'm gonna test them all out. Make sure they're all clear. Yeah. Anyway, things looks pretty good. Ways look pretty good. Uh, flaking is, or I guess it's kind of flaking. It's uh, you know, it's, it's scraper marks uh, for to provide some lubrication. You see that there. There's carriage. We just set it on the floor. Not too bad for cleaning that up. Uh, we'll be able to. I'll get that. We'll start working on that and get that all prepped and ready to go so we can set it back on actually won't take too long things look in good shape what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and remove this there's way too much play we'll zoom in on that and I'll show you how the screw is well, really worn this part here does not look to be the same part as this because the way it's you can see how it's uh, there's a big gap in here so until I get it apart we'll see how it is and I'm, I want to make a new one of these and either probably maybe make a whole new one of these or modify this uh, to work. Now, I've measured it and it's an, it looks like an Acme 10 P TPI 3 quarter inch uh, thread. Now you can see, uh, you can see how much play there is in that. It's an awful lot. We got a scanner on today. There's fires. Helicopter flew over. I don't think the fire's close. Can't see any smoke. But oh yeah, and they're calling engines and everything going on. So you can see the play in that. It's pretty bad. Uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, maybe I can get a closer shot. You'll see how the threads are worn out. Now this is kind of hard to tell how you can see how thick or how wide the top of the thread is here compared to how it's razor sharp down in here. Uh, kind of hard to see but you can see how they've worn out in their thickness to the being uh, razor sharp here and a sixteenth of an inch wide here so it's pretty obvious and then all the play. 
So let's uh, we'll get that apart. There's a two pins, hole, holes for a spanner, but I don't have a spanner that can fit in there that tight. So it's not that it wasn't that tight; just barely tapped on it. I'll just spin this out. I'm going to unscrew this out of the nut. Pretty simple it looks like so far. And the shaft. And a uh, couple bearings. Might even if I can get some new ones, maybe I'll if I can figure out what they are, maybe I can maybe get a new ones in there. I mean, they're two they're two of double ones. Don't feel too bad. I think this piece is pressed on right here. Uh, I just need a piece of three-quarter stock and make a whole new one of these shafts. So I'm just sitting here wiping the grease and stuff off of this. This piece here is loose actually and just is slipped on so that's that's really nice uh i'll figure out how i can get these bearings off of there they have probably that oh there they all <laughs> they all come off so they'll all just slip off i just gotta get the key the woodruff key out this will all slip off and i'll get a piece of three-quarter stock and have to make a new one I just tap that Woodruff key out and that comes right off. Let's see, a little bit of gunk on here. Oh. Uh, there's a little, little burr on that key. I'll get a stone. And take a stone and get any burr off of there. There we go. Comes off. That comes off. Bearings. There's a shaft. We'll make a new one. What material it is? Don't know. I'm thinking I'll probably make it out of uh, 41. Uh, it's 41, uh, 40 over there somewhere. I think. Probably make it out of that. So this is the drawing uh, for the lead screw. And this is the, the uh, old lead screw. So this end here fits into a needle a bearing in the casting. Acme thread, 10 TPI, 3 quarter inch. Then we have a little shoulder and then there's the piece with the that holds the bearings. It slips on here and then a sleeve that slips on here, Woodrow key, and then the handle. And we have a 7 16 thread on the end, uh, 7 16 20. So we're going to uh, start this now. Looks like they've, they, they've had each end center drilled, but who knows how they made it if they turned it between centers. If you do this, if you turn this between centers, you have over 10 inches of thread to make. Uh, this could actually flex a bit. So I'm not going to turn it between centers. So we'll get started. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this end first. Get that done. I don't need to turn this. Now the piece of material I'm using is a 4140 pre-hardened 3 quarter ground rod. I checked it as a shaft uh, on my uh, balancing wheels. Just a couple tenths if, if anything. There's no bend in it. It's nice and straight. So I'll probably turn this end first, turn this end 
yet. Probably do this last. That way I have a lot of stock and I can put this put this end in the chuck and put the center on this and have plenty of room for threading on each end and then do the thread and then flip it around in the chuck and then do this end. Got stock in the in the six jaw. I've checked the uh, run out and it's just a, a few tenths if that. Uh, it's very very minimal. I've already faced and center drilled each end. Just to speed things Bump up. this up there, touch off, touch the end of the piece. I need to be 935 over. And come out. Dial indicator on the ways. I marked that about 50,000 shy of my of the actual length that I want. Next cut will be my final. Hopefully the final. thousandths over which is just fine it's got a little little bit of heat in it and yeah, not too much but it'll probably shrink a little bit and then we're gonna I before I did anything to this after turning it I pulled it out and did a fit test in the bearing and it fits just just fine just a night just a nice slip in fit so we're gonna leave it alone and it did I lost a uh, seven tenths uh, after cooling off in size, so we're about we're 626, so that, that'll be fine. We're a thousandth over the from the 625, so and that it fits just fine. So on my drawing, I did uh, baseline measurements, so I used a, this end as my datum end, and so all my lengths here are measured from that end. And that helps keep your length consistent throughout your part piece by doing this. Uh, you don't want to do, if you just go by all the individuals and if you're off a few thousands and off a few thousand, next thing you know your part's too long or too short. So you, by doing this you can confirm your, your lengths and you'll, you'll end up with everything properly uh, set. It's uh, this gonna really help you out uh, making your parts. So we need to have about eleven and a half 
uh, 12 inches uh, sticking out of the part. I'm going to use a really highly accurate tape measure here. So I blued up a section here on my, on my shaft from my reference end and then I mounted it in the V-block. So my reference ends on the surface plate. Now I can take my height gauge and describe the few lines I need on here. So we'll just, uh, that's the first one. And that's all we'll that's all we'll need for now. So a nice easy way to hold it straight, uh, perpend uh, you know square to the plate uh, in a nice V block. All right, uh, back in the back in the chuck and the lathe, I have my three marks there. So my first mark is where my threads end. Then there's a a large wide groove, and then there's a shoulder here. It's only 115 thousandths wide. So this is this is a, basically my thread relief on this end. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to cut that thread relief uh, first, and then the thread uh, starts right right here from the end and goes on down. So here is that thread relief area right here, and this this uh, shoulder which the bearings butt up against. So we'll go in there and make this thread relief and then the, on the other end the threads of course just, just end. I'm just going to use this uh, parting tool. This is one the one I got from uh, Seco Tools. It's uh, very narrow. It's only, I don't know, 60 thousandths wide I think. Uh, I don't know. I'll measure it. <laughs> it's not very wide. 80 thousandths wide. But we'll, we'll go in and do each side uh, to depth, or pretty close to depth, I should say. And then we'll take out the center. It needs to be 67 thousandths uh, deep. You can see the three lines I made uh, scribed in one, two, and three. So it's going to be between these two lines.
We're shooting for 615, uh, 614.9, I think we'll call that good. This is just a real a large uh, uh, grooving tool here. It's great for making uh, grooves like this because you can go side to side actually and cut with it. The thread is uh, Acme. It's 10 threads per inch. Now this is an Acme thread pitch gauge. This is the only kind I've ever seen is this this one. one this is a Starrett one. But, so this is the only one I've ever had. The only one I've ever used. <laughs> so it's at number 284. And they're 29 degrees. So this is for uh, these notches here for grinding your thread angle. Or your, I mean, your tool angle. If you're grinding a, a thread, and this is, uh, I mean, if you're grinding a tool, these notches are the threads per inch, starting at one down up to ten. And this is so you can grind your tool has to fit that notch, and that gives you the width at the tip of the thread. Uh, kind of hard to see, but they're in there. And you well you can and you can use it to set up your tool. What I did since it's such a small tool, uh, it's very difficult to grind. I just I just bought an insert that's 10 P TPI Acme. I bought one for internal threading and one for external t threading to fit my tool holders. So we can just measure, put that up there, and I set it square. I've set my compound at zero. Uh, parallel to the uh, your work and I have my height centered and I've just taken my work up straight touched off zeroed my dial now the depth of thread for the Acme uh, for 10 pitch is 60 thousandths and on your gauge which is kind of nice it gives you a little little cheater here it says the depth of thread is half the pitch plus 10 thousandths so that makes it easy. So for a 10, it's 60 thousandths.